Hello friends, this video on data handling part 11 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now that we have learned about the various parameters that is mean, median and mode to represent the central tendency of a group of data, let us now talk more about representation of data. How do we represent data using graphs or what do we infer from graphs? So even if nothing is given in the form of a table or nothing is written in the form of text, just by looking at the graph, what are the information that we get? So when we talk about representing data using graphs, now let me take this example. Let's say that in a class where a lot of students are there and the teacher had asked the students to tell which is their favorite fruit. So they really need to choose out of these fruits. Like some of them said apple, some said mango, some said grapes and some opted for banana. So all of them had different choices. Now, since in a class you have huge number of students, you might have 60 students, you might have 100 or even 200 students in a class. So it is very difficult to represent this data in the form of a table because the table will actually go very long. So one nice way of representing this data is using graph. So on the screen, you can see a bar graph. So we have already introduced bar graph in your class 6th. In case you have forgotten, you can just have a quick look at the basics of bar graph in your class 6th mathematics video. So here in bar graphs, we make use of these rectangular bars. You see, I have shown the bars here in different colors, yellow, green, red. So these bars represent the frequency of each particular item. For example, let's say that 50 students in the class said that their favorite fruit is apple. So this is a very nice way of representing this. So this bar represents the number of students who liked apple. Again, this bar represents the number of students who liked mango. So here you see this graph represents that 40 students like mango. Again, the yellow bar graph it says that 30 students like grapes and finally 20 students like a banana. So that means each bar represents the frequency of a particular item. So this is how a bar graph is very conveniently used to represent data. Now you would have seen the presence of these kind of graphs in newspapers often uh, for analyzing uh, business related things like profit or sales over a year graphs are being used also to in the weather forecast region just to tell how the weather has been changing for the last couple of days we make use of graphs so in the newspaper you actually get to see a lot of graphs being used and, and that's like a, a real life example where you can see these kind of graphs so here what we will learn is how do we represent in these graphs. So let us quickly learn how do we draw a bar graph. So let us say that we, we have considered a small set of data because here we just want to learn how do we draw a bar graph. So we need to follow a few very simple steps in order to draw a graph. So the first thing that we do is we draw the x and the y axis so you, normally you draw graphs on a, a, a particular graph paper or otherwise here I'm just giving you a rough idea about how do you do go about it. So this horizontal axis is your x axis and the vertical axis is your y axis and this point where the two uh, intersects each other is the origin. We call this origin. Now what we do is we represent the students on the x axis and the mark scored by them on the y-axis. And now it is very important to write all these things so that it becomes evident by looking at the graph what is the x-axis representing and what is the y-axis representing. Now is the most important part. We need to choose a suitable scale so that we can represent all the numbers. Now when you look at the marks obtained, what are the numbers that you have? So the minimum number that you have is 20. Then you have numbers like 24, you have 25 and so on till 
50. So you basically have numbers lying between 20 and 50 and you have to represent all these numbers on the y axis. So you will have to choose a suitable scale so that you can cover all the numbers from 20 to 50 within a small length of the scale because you know your graph paper also is of a limited height right so you you cannot indefinitely keep drawing um, i mean keep numbering it so it has to be convenient we have to make sure that this length should not go become very long now see there are different ways of choosing your scale one option is you choose i mean when you look at a graph paper you do see these kind of square boxes right this is how a graph paper look like so you have bigger squares and inside those bigger squares you have smaller squares like this. So this is how your graph paper looks like. So from here till here within one box you have 10 small divisions. Again from here to here you have 10 small divisions. From here to here you again have 10 small divisions. So that is how the pattern of division is in a graph paper. So now let's say that these are the points which represent the big square boxes in your graph paper. So we can actually scale them in many different ways. One option is you scale, this is, you consider this as zero, this is one, this is two, this is three, four, five, six. If you start numbering it like this, do you know where will 50 come? It will come after very, very long. So this is not a feasible way of numbering it. So one convenient way of numbering it is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and so on. So what does it mean? It means that these this particular length represent 10 units. That means the small small 10 subdivisions that we have each of those subdivision represent one unit. So basically this is one unit, two unit, three unit, four unit, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten. So that's how each of these unit, it represents 10 units. So this is the scale that we would be using here in this case. Now let's start drawing the bars. So let's draw the first bar for Akash and the Akash had scored 50. So 50 would be here. So you draw a bar here. And this bar is for Akash. Then the next bar would be for Amit and he scored 39. So 39 would be somewhere here. So let's say this bar is for Amit. Then the third bar would be for Rekha who scored 20. So 20 is here. So let's say this bar is for Rekha's score. The fourth bar is for Anu who scored 25. So 25 will lie exactly in the middle of 20 and 30. So somewhere here. So this one is for Anu. And then you have Rana who scored 52. So 52 would be somewhere here. So this is Rana. And finally Trisha who scored 24. So 24 would be slightly below 25. So this would be for Tisha. So this is how you can represent a bar graph. Now let's forget about this uh, table. Just looking at this graph itself, you can tell the scores of each of them. In fact, just by looking at the height of the bars, you can tell who scored the maximum and who scored the minimum. But the most important thing while drawing a bar graph is to choose the scale. So in this case, we chose the scale in such a way that one unit represent 10 marks. What is one unit? One unit is nothing but the bigger square. So that big square represents 10 marks. So that is how we have chosen the scale in this case. Now the this is the bar graph which we had drawn. Now let us see what are the different information that can be extracted looking at this bar graph or how do we interpret this bar graph. So some of the things which you can very easily tell looking at this bar graph is who has the highest score? The one with the tallest bar and the tallest bar is this one. So Rana has the highest score. Who has the lowest score? The one with the shortest bar and Rekha has the shortest bar. Therefore Rekha scored the lowest. 
So again, looking at these kind of bars, you can actually tell. Now here in this case, it is this bar graph is for scores of students in a class. Let's say if you have a bar graph which tells the performance of one particular students in different semesters. Maybe performance in first semester, second semester, third semester. So in that case, you can even compare the performance looking at the height of the bars. Right? So that means the bar graph themselves are self-explanatory. Just looking at the bar graph, you can infer a lot of information from it. Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four-step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.